hi guys welcome back to my channel once again yes 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 she's still here she's still here <laughs> anyways so welcome back to my channel today guys if this is your first time stopping by my channel you are absolutely welcome i really really appreciate you guys and if you're a returning subscriber uh, thank you thank you <laughs> so my name is Onyeka, and i'm a nigerian youtuber based in canada london ontario to be specific i basically make videos documenting my life for you guys you know everything everything before we start this video you already know how we do things in this yeah. in this channel please just subscribe it's right there you see that blinky thing mm -hmm. just subscribe to my channel and when you do subscribe don't forget to click on the bell like button so that you get notified for every 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 video that i post and you will not miss any of my content at all so today i have the beautiful osarimi on my channel you guys already know her she's now like family on my channel yes. yes don't forget to subscribe to her channel i'm going to leave her the link to her channel in the description box so head over to her channel leave a comment tell her that you're from my channel okay and show my girl some love all right yes so today we decided to film a video for you guys I'm judging from the title you already know what this video is so basically um we're just going to be talking about the things you need to do when you land in canada yeah. either as a student or a pr permanent resident yeah, yeah re reminder i came as a student and she came as a permanent, permanent resident. resident so as well i need to tell you guys what you need to do we're also going to be like talking about our personal experiences based on how we did it when we arrived because we kind of did some things differently, differently yeah. yeah so if you want to know more about this topic then keep watching so before we get right into this video i just want to give a brief disclaimer that we are not immigration agents we're mm -hmm. just telling you things based off of our research, research and our experience yeah. that's it okay and things are changing constantly things are changing fast so in case we say something and then when you arrive it's a little bit different uh, sorry sorry <laughs> we're just kind of, we're just trying to inform you now based on the information that we have yeah because at the time we arrived we arrived in 2018 yes there was no pandemic so exactly. things were a bit different mm -hmm. but now Based on the pandemic, everything is a bit... Uh, you already understand. Yeah. Okay, guys. So the first thing on our list is study permit. So if you're arriving in Canada as a student, um, you need to get your study permit from the airport. Your study permit is different from your study visa. Study visa is that counter foil thing on your passport. While your study permit is one brownish paper, I'll try to insert a picture on the screen for you guys. So you get your study permit from the airport, from the immigration, I think. So try to put your important documents in your carry-on luggage and not in your main luggage. So you don't have to, you know, mm -hmm, they already understand. Mm -hmm. So yes, your study permit, get it from the airport before you leave. So guys, if you're coming in as a permanent resident, Or even the, a student. Or even a student, actually, yes. Um, one of the things that you need to sort out before you even land is your accommodation so you need because of the pandemic i feel like we're saying because of the pandemic a lot but so, <laughs> yes you, you we all know what's happening mm -hmm. um so you need a place that you can quarantine for 14 days but now that they have switched things and uh, the trap there's a new travel restriction that says that you have to quarantine in a for designated hotel for 14 days and pay two grand and pay two thousand like yes. two thousand dollars i don't know much about that but i'm hearing if you're coming in you have in, to pay two thousand dollars yes so i don't know if they'll change it before this video even goes out but please do your research in that aspect um so by the time you have uh, let's say you've you picked a hotel or you quarantine in a designated hotel for 14 days mm -hmm. Before the 14 days elapses, you need to find a place where you would um, stay. Either an Airbnb after the quarantine. Or just extend. Or you just, exactly, just extend your but stay. But your hotel, hotel will be expensive. It's more expensive. So, so an Airbnb will be preferable. Yeah, cheaper. Uh, yeah, cheaper. And then um, while you're in the Airbnb, that's if you're not able to even find a permanent accommodation in the hotel. While you're in the hotel, you can look for an Airbnb. And then that's where you stay temporarily. Then you can, can now start place. looking for a place to stay. Yeah, I stayed in my Airbnb for about two weeks, almost three weeks. We actually stayed for a month. We, we in fact, we lived in the house. <laughs> we, I, I cleaned the house. I became a permanent resident in the house. <laughs> While you're in the hotel quarant quarantining, the quarantining, 
anyways you have to make arrangements for your food your supplies your everything because you're not allowed to leave and i know instacart depending on the city but i don't think instacart is in every city i don't know i think they're in london okay yeah. but just try to make arrangements for someone to get you food and your personal supplies yeah and if you're not able to use instacart you can send me a dm um but this is just for london alone i know it's certain people who are helping um people run errands newcomers. for newcomers actually for a little okay. fee so if you're coming to london and you need to run errands somewhere around within the mm -hmm. london area you can send me a dm and then i'll hook you up with them while you're already making plans to check out from your hotel i'm sure you already start making plans to find a house and you can check websites like kijiji zomper even facebook marketplace facebook marketplace yes i found my place on facebook yes i found my place <laughs> on facebook Marketplace. It's, it just seems to be like if well, i go to right facebook now, marketplace is not in nigeria but when you come yes. to canada up update your facebook, facebook app and you have the marketplace yeah and then when you're choosing a house try to consider the proximity of the house and your school or campus so, yeah. only god knows when the lockdown will be lifted or pandemic you know we cannot go back to classes so try to choose a place that is close, close to, your, to school. your school and a place that is very close to the bus stop as well Thank so you. you don't have to walk for a so mile. long yeah, yeah looking for the bus so the next thing that you need to do as soon as you arrive in canada is to get your social insurance number it is usually a nine digit number and it is compulsory for everyone yeah. in canada to have a social insurance number without it you cannot access government benefits or, or your salary or your salary you cannot even work you cannot do anything basically yeah. without your social you insurance stop. number yeah so um in my case when we arrived we arrived very early in the morning so the officials were still very much available to give us our social insurance number so we got it immediately we arrived at the airport but um i got my <laughs> you say yeah you say you yes. got yours i got mine in service canada like at that time i didn't even know you, anything like social insurance number i didn't even know you could get it from airport so <laughs> i think it was a few days later or something then i went to get my own in service canada yeah so um with this situation now um i think it's available online, online. you can actually order it uh, yes i remember online. when i got my pr that was in june last year I ordered for my social insurance number online. It's true, and they delivered it to my house. To your house. Yeah, it so, was so convenient. That's what, that's actually why you need a you need an accommodation with so an that, address. With an address. It's true. Yes, so that they can deliver the social insurance number to you. Um, the next thing would be getting a SIM card. Mm -hmm. And we all know how important it is getting a SIM card yeah. because you'll be in quarantine. I don't know if you can get it from the airport, but you should try to check the airport if you can get a SIM card. But if you can't, you should try to order from phone box. Um, I'm going to leave a link to their website so you can read all about them. You can actually get your SIM card from Nigeria and then it will get shipped to your address when you arrive here so you don't have to wait too long to get a sim card mm -hmm. and i mean I'm, I'm just going to go back to when it was the good old days mm -hmm. we actually got our sim card from our bank when we opened our Are bank yeah they gave us a free sim card yeah i um, got mine the same day i did my sim oh after okay. service canada i just the couple i stayed with they took me to somewhere to get a sim card so there are different types of sim card there's charter there's bell there's freedom uh, there's plenty. Rogers, Fido. virgin mm -hmm. and i know someone actually asked which one is better yeah, someone honest, asked me too. it depends on you it depends on how you use your internet the kind of plans you want um it depends on if you want them to provide you with internet for your home and internet for your phone as well so it just it really boils down to you to be honest yeah, there's no the first time i came i had to do the one that can call nigeria Ah, when they give me bill, <laughs> <laughs> but it's expensive though, so yeah. just prepare, prepare so, your mind. One tip I'm going to give you guys: um, if you want to save more money, install the app called Reptel. You'll be able to call Nigeria for a small fee. Mm -hmm. So that's what I used to call internationally. International, yeah. So, guys, the next thing you need to do is open a bank account, and we all know that it is very important to open a bank account, <laughs> even as a permanent resident and as a student. Um, mm -hmm. So. Yes, we're just going to give you a list of banks that are available. To be honest, it's still this one still boils down they're to good. you. Yeah. They're all they all, all they're offer reputable. almost yeah they're they're reputable. They all offer almost the same services. Just a little difference here and there. So um, when you figure out the kind of banks that are available, you can now call them and find out which of them um, is offering maybe any student, student discount, discount or Im new immigrant discount. Mm -hmm. um, some people can give you like maybe $500 cash back. Yeah. Some people can give you an iPad. 
it just depends yes, yes. <laughs> it just depends but you have to meet certain criterias um you have to have maybe opened certain accounts with them or you have to have done certain things with them before um, they give you the money it's not just for free <laughs> so uh, some of the banks are td your scotia bank BMO, yeah, that's BMO, bank of yeah. montreal rbc yeah. what's rbc royal bank of canada yeah, cibc <laughs> mm -hmm. also try to apply for a credit card so you can start building your credit, credit score, score credit yeah. card is everything your credit score is everything you're going to need that credit score to get a house to even get a car and to even buy a house yeah. so order for your credit card on time and have them explain to you how credit card works, works if you don't know exactly. how it works mm -hmm. and then if you're you can also find out if they have any credit card that doesn't that offers maybe like like very little interest rate or no interest rate at all from for me i get free scene points as cinema points so i have like i can watch free movies free in the movies. cinema after the pandemic <laughs> why some people get cash back yeah some people get get cash back while some people um have very little interest rates so the next thing you need to do is get your health card as a permanent resident when you arrive in canada you have access to free health care but this is only possible if you have your health card with yeah. you so you apply for your health card and you can do that um in service ontario that's um, for people in Ontario. For but people for in Ontario. In yeah. a different province, you have to do that research. I can't remember. Exactly. And then if you're in BC, you can get your health card from ICBC. Okay. Mm -hmm. But how was it for you as um, students? Well, as a student, um, you are entitled to some sort of coverage by your school. They provide some sort of like health and dental plan for you. But you have to confirm this. Like, I don't know what you're entitled to because it varies from school to school okay. personally i was given some sort of allowance for example like maybe a thousand dollars for my dental whatever per semester but exhausted it <laughs> exhausted in dental <laughs> <laughs> so yeah so just confirm with your school ask them what are you entitled to in terms of your health insurance yeah so after you guys have done everything we've said above you know as a student you can go ahead to register with your school I think it's relative to school, so they'll tell you what to do when you arrive. I'm just trying to get acquainted with everything, your school schedule and every, every. And then if you are coming from Nigeria and you have a driver's license, please come with it. Yeah. And if you don't have a driver's, driver's license, license, please try to get one from Nigeria. Yeah. It makes the whole makes driving it easier. process easier. I think yeah. you had a video. Yeah, I actually have a video on my channel about how to get a driver's license, everything you need to know. So you can head over to my channel to watch that. So I will try to link that up here in my channel. And then also for international students, um, you might need to have some sort of government issued photo ID. And if you're in Ontario, you can try to get there's this, I think it's Ontario, it's a provincial, provincial card. card. Yes, it's a provincial card. And you can get it from Service Ontario. Ontario. Okay. Yes. It's like, you know, photo ID with your address and everything. And then when you finally get your place, you need to update your address with your bank, your school, and every other place you put your address. So if you're coming in as a permanent resident, after you've gotten your health card and everything, um, you can get a family doctor um you need to find a family doctor <laughs> you don't have a family doctor yes <laughs> yeah i mean it's not it's not so like the spaces are not really really available so you can just find out from people there are also platforms where you can um find a doctor uh but if you have a friend that's already in canada you can call them up and ask them if their family, uh, family doctor, doctor is, is available. available and taking in new patients is your doctor available Okay guys, so we have come to the end of this video. I hope we try to make this video as short as possible so you don't get bored. Yes, I hope you guys did learn a thing or two from this video and you enjoyed it. And if you did enjoy, don't forget to smash that like button, share this video, subscribe to our channels, subscribe. Remember the link to her channel is in the description box. Yeah. Follow us on Instagram and so I'll see you guys in my next video. Stay safe and stay blessed. Bye. Bye.